Is this the next quest mode LR? How should you build Super Saiyan Bardock's hidden potential? How's it everybody? Celtic Link here. We're back for another Dokkan battle video. In today's video, we are taking a look at the newest quest mode awakened character, the Super Saiyan Bardock. Now let me go ahead and put this right out here. There's a very high likelihood that this dude will end up awakening into an LR. However, I don't think the basics of his passive are going to change too much, right? At best, like the TUR, of the trunks and broly it's basically just gonna dial everything up and maybe add one or two different things but this dude pretty much is already doing everything we're likely to see with him now he and to add on to that he's already got his special equip so knowing that we can kind of we, we can pretty much assume we know the best hidden potential route for him. So in this video, we're going to focus on what I believe is the best route to go. So let's let's take a look at what he's doing. So he is a time traveler's category key to HP attack defense 50%. On a super attack effect, he is raising his attack infinitely and greatly raising defense for the turn. He also causes supreme damage to the enemy and lowers attack. He activates an entrance animation once only on his passive and launches an additional attack that has a 70% chance of becoming a super attack for four turns from the entry turn when there are four or more super class allies on the team. He gets attack defense 100%. He gives super class allies key one and attack defense 20%. He gives time traveler allies an additional key one and attack defense 20%. Plus, he gets an additional attack 100% when there's a Wicked Bloodline enemy. He has a medium chance of performing a critical hit. And he launches an additional attack that has a 50% chance of becoming a super attack when all allies are super class. He also has an additional attack of defense 50% and when performing a super attack. And has an additional attack 50% uh, and chance of performing a critical hit 50% when HP is 50% or less. So... Going right off of this passive alone, we can already tell what the way to go is, right? And we, if we just assume the LR is going to take all of this and bump it up a notch, we can probably assume the following is going to happen. Number one, his entrance animation probably not going to change all that much, although I could just see this becoming a guaranteed super attack uh, once he becomes an LR. This is going to bump up to 200%. This might stay the same, but I could see them bumping this category up to uh, 30%, right? So it's 50% if it's time, um, if it's time travelers, or it could, you know, it could still be 50% time travelers, but they bump the circuit class up to 30%, or they might just leave it, right? I don't think there are many free plays that are 50% support, so they might just leave this entirely. Um, but I could definitely see the attack going up to 150%, or even 200% when facing Wicked Bloodline. Um, I can see this being bumped up from a high to a great chance um, on his passive, and then this bumping up to 150% as this as well. So knowing that, the question is, is what do you build this hidden potential well first off right let's take a look at his defensive stats so currently as an ssr or as a tur rather his max possible defense is 740 now he is a free-to-play unit a quest mode unit at that but that is extremely low even by most free-to-play standards so i'm going to wager a guess that just looking on the stats alone and his passive there's probably a pretty good chance the LR is coming eventually. When? Can't say. But there's a good chance he will awaken. So just be aware that this is what we're dealing with. Now, knowing that this is what we're dealing with and knowing what he's doing, it does make this kind of easy, right? So as, you know, being that he has exclusive skill orbs, you have exclusive skill orbs that can go max defense, which is what you're always going to want to do with these units. Max defense and probably max dodge if you can get away with it. Um, or you can do another route, right? So like the other free-to-play units, I always envision two possibilities, right? And looking at what he's doing on his super attack effects, um, I'm going to go with additional attack right now i say this because one he's stacking attack he has built-in crit so no need crit he's stacking attack you want him to stack attack he does have a high chance of also doing an additional attack right possibly bump that up to 70 percent and then for his the uh for his initial turns yeah he has four turns of 70 percent so 
I would say that given that, um, right, you could possibly see, right, one super, two supers, three supers, hidden potential, four supers in turn, each one greatly raising the defense, each one raising the attack. So, right, and you see, right, that's going to, um, that is going to look a lot better now. I'm not really sh um I'm not really sure why he's not factoring in the hidden potential here, right? Because if for the first four turn, four turns, that hidden potential is possible. Um, I'll, okay, I so see. Yeah, it's just assuming you don't have a full superclass, but if you do have a full superclass, okay, got it for the first four turns. Um, so for the, he's only factoring in the first four turns of defense. Um, so for the, all the way up through forty percent, which would put you at seven forty, right? So. A little bit low but i mean it's better than what he would have without that additionals right again being that he doesn't have built-in dodge as an agl unit the best he's going to get is 15 percent maybe 25 if you invest full dodge whereas you can get up to 40 percent if you go combo attack so i definitely think that's probably the way to go especially given that he will awaken so i would say priority combo attack with sub dodge he doesn't need the crit or reverse it if you're feeling a little bit more of the dodge persuasion right reverse it you'll get 25 percent with you know around the same uh level of additional attack it's not going to make too much of a difference but you know the chance of evading is there versus it not being there at all right it's just kind of up to you which to you you prefer um although i do think you know upon awakening you're probably going knowing that this is what's happening here you're probably going to more better benefit from additional attack so guys that is it for the video that is my recommendation for the hidden potential for the agl super saiyan free to play bardock from the quest mode dude's pretty easy to awaken his skill orbs are pretty easy to get um i do recommend going max defense uh, skill orbs that's always my recommendation with these free to play units because it just kind of holds them there in place a little bit longer before they age out as free to play units um so definitely make sure you guys do that if you guys like the video make sure you hit that like button subscribe to the channel if you have not already in the comments down below let us know how did you build your quest mode agl bardock let us know in the comments down below otherwise guys as always thanks for watching and aloha